God, we praise you. Glory to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we pray We thank you for your presence. We thank you for moving through this place, oh God. Every prayer that was just lifted up, oh God, we believe already that you're yes, already God. Yes, we believe already that you're already working on our behalf. We believe yes. already that whether the answer is yes, no, or wait, God, yes. that it is the right answer because you said it, oh God. Believe yes, 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 whatever yes, it is yes, yes, yes. you're telling us to do, oh God. God, we thank you. Yes, God. We thank you for the ability to intercede for one another. Yes, yes, yes. We thank you for the yes. ability to share, oh God, and come yes, together God. and join and stand in unison together, oh God. Oh God, we thank you. Yes, God. At this moment, oh God, I should forgive me for my sins, oh God. Make me ready. Let the people see Jesus on. Mm -hmm. Make us ready, receptive, and responsive to your word. What is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Good to see you, Doc. I'm young. Yeah. I was going to call you. I saw your thing this morning. I was like, I've been waiting for him to say something because I'm going to use him. While he ain't doing it as you can sell. So we're going to talk at the service. <laughs> I bless God. I just thank God for it. Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, man. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Y'all know we're not going to be long. I'm going to hit this real quick. And we're going to begin looking at verse 16. Just a couple verses today. And it reads, for we did not follow commonly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came from him, from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven and we were with him on the holy mountain. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Real quickly, we're going to lift up valued experience. Mm -hmm. Value the authentic experience. Mm -hmm. A major struggle in our society today is being qualified for positions because everyone wants you to have prior experience. Mm -hmm. When people graduate from college with degrees as they enter the workforce, they only find out that everyone wants you to have five years experience in whatever field you decide to go to. So your degree is nice, but it does not qualify you. One of the reasons it's hard to make relationships work is because you've never experienced a successful one until you're in one. Mm. Well, Hallelujah. Every relationship you base your current relationship off of has been a failure. Mm. So you have no successful relationship experience to pull from because you've never experienced one before. You may have had a long-term relationship, but if the relationship ended and it wasn't due to death, ultimately, <coughs> it failed. When we watch TV, whether it be politics or sports, the people commentating are analysts. And we listen to them because they supposedly have experience. It is hard to listen to a person when they run their mouth, but they've never been <laughs> successful well, at what well, they're talking well, well, about. Well, There's a gentleman by the name of Matt Miller. Mr. Miller was the general manager of the Detroit Lions. And when he was the general manager, the Lions went a shocking 0 and 16. And he got fired. And when he got fired, he was hired by ESPN as an analyst. And he wasn't taken seriously because how can you analyze something that you failed so miserably at? Right. So they had to demote him to college because he couldn't talk about the pro game. Mm -hmm. And then in the college game, when he says he likes a college player as a pro player, now that college player has an asterisk because he was so bad as a pro analyst. Well, well. He has no experience in wow. what he's speaking about. Wow. It is a pet peeve of mine when a person recommends something and they've never done it or they've never purchased it. Mm. 
themselves. Uh -huh. All right. right. How can you speak to that what you do not know? Right. You can't tell me skydiving is a great experience if you've never left the ground. All right. Uh -huh. People often recommend stuff off secondhand knowledge but have no firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. And our text, Peter is giving first-hand knowledge. Right. Peter says, I'm not making this up. I was there. I watched Jesus do miraculous things. I heard God's voice speak to him and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. I was blessed to be on the mountain doing transfiguration. I had first-hand knowledge of what happened. I submit to you that a lot of people with the label of believers have not had first-hand knowledge my, of my, 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 my. and what Jesus has done to them. they graduated from new members' classes and they go to churches, but they have no experience of the Christ. All right. What are your credentials to call yourself a believer? What, what, are the, what credit do you have to call yourself a Christian? I believe many people are confused. Romans 10 and 9 says, you declare with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you yeah. shall be saved. Uh -huh. I think a lot of people skip this step and think, if I join the biggest church on the block, uh -huh. now I'm saved. Mm -hmm. If I speak the church lingo, now I'm saved. All right. If I'm suited and booted on Sundays, <laughs> now uh -huh. I'm saved. And we just forget the declarative statement that Jesus is Lord and Jesus got up and now he is the Lord and the of my life. We skip yeah. Yeah. Over okay. Okay. that part. Mm -hmm. People tell grandiose stories about how good God is, but they've never experienced Him themselves. Right. They talk about my church does this and my pastor is that, but there's no personal connection to yes. who Christ is. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a person and they're always telling someone else's story? Mm -hmm. I know so and so and they did this. I know so and so and they went here. I know so and so and they overcame this. But they have no stories about where they've been, what no. they've done, or what yeah. God has brought them through. Too many right. believers only have stories to tell about so and so. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. The cross has no meaning to you until you personally realize what salvation means. Yeah. Yeah. I can stand up here and teach Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection all day long, but if you have no experience of his saving grace, Mm. Then you don't understand the power of crucifixion. Right. That's right. I say crucifixion, and you don't understand it because you haven't it. Spirit all right. Uh -huh. uh, y'all yeah. be quiet today. Uh -huh. When I say his blood washed away all my sins, that resonates with me because I know what I've done. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I've been cleansed of it, and it's free. Uh -huh. But in order for others to understand that, they have to walk in that for them. Sam, All right. Yes, yes. If you believe you've never done nothing, and I know that's bad English, but if you believe you ain't never done nothing, <laughs> Jesus washing away sins has no meaning. Uh -huh. Right, right. You think you did it by yourself. You think you've never been in trouble. You think I don't need to be saved. I have a friend right now, and the reason why I can't get him to meet Jesus for himself is because he thinks it's a myth that we need to be redeemed back to God. My, my. Oh, why do I need to be redeemed? And he is not the only one in that thing. And there's a lot of people. That I'm good all by my lone suit. Mm -hmm. And if an end of world moment comes, I'll crawl in the corner and decide whether there's a God or not. Pick which one and pray to him. <laughs> that's a quote. And that's a sad place to be. Yeah. When there is a God waiting for you to bow, oh, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preach. Too many church folk testify about what God has done for others. Too many church folk have no experience of what he's done. Mm -hmm. But we need to have a personal relationship. Yeah. He says, we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it as the light a shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. When you meet God personally, you can quote texts like Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet. Yes, sir. And a light to my path. Yeah. To understand that text means... I've been in some situations I didn't know which way was up. Right. But the word of God, which is completely reliable, right. was the light in a dark place, and it was all I had to hold on to. Yes, sir. And it led me to a place where I couldn't see but where I needed mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you understand that the word is reliable, you can protest like that because I've experienced it. That's right. It That's right. When yeah. God led me, and I couldn't see where it was taking me, but it took me to a place. And all of a sudden, things in my life started to open up, and I can hold on to it because I experienced it. Yeah. Only a true experience will open up that text for you. Peter had some experiences he could pull from. Peter
Peter saw Jesus walk on water. Uh -huh. Peter and I permit me to come to you. Mm -hmm. The only one who decided, you know what, I'm going to get up and experience this mm -hmm. for my own self. Mm -hmm. Peter cut off a man's ear trying to benefit Jesus, and he saw Jesus put the ear back on. He understood the miraculous power that yeah. was in right. Christ right. because he experienced it. So he was there when he fed 5,000, and he's like, why are you asking why these people touch you? He understood yeah. what was going on because I saw God take two fish, and I saw God yeah. feed a bunch of people. I yes. seen the power in him, so I'm coming to you now. I'm speaking from personal yes, sir. experience. Yeah. 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 The 21st century church doubts miracles because we think we made a way ourselves. Yeah. But my experience tells me that when I didn't have any food, he made a way uh -huh. out of nowhere. Uh -huh. ah. But we believe I did. Mm -hmm. And I figured it out. Mm -hmm. And I opened the door for myself. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I answered my own question and I didn't have to pray to nobody. All right. I no longer believe uh -huh. in miracles because science has to explain everything. Mm -hmm. But in my experience, I've seen God do some stuff, and I can tell you he's still in the miracle working business. Yeah, yeah. In my experience, my nephew, when he first started to walk, snuck upstairs in the second story house, got in the room, yes, sir. pumped on the screen, knocked the screen out, fell out the second story window, mm -hmm. went down to the deck, which is at ground level. But there's a glass table that he should have yes. went through, but he did. Mm -hmm. He should have had some broke bones, but he did. Yeah. He should have yeah. had some scars, but he did. Yeah. He cried, but he walked away. Yeah. Something about that personal experience with the Christ and something about that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. Can I meet him mm -hmm. for myself? Mm -hmm. Peter goes on in chapter 2 to talk about false prophets and teachers. Mm -hmm. And he knows that because he's experienced the truth. Mm -hmm. It's easy to point out a bad teacher when you know the right way. That's right. Um, when I met and I walked for three and a half years with the authenticness of the authenticness, your fakeness is easy to point out. Yes, sir. <laughs> Show you right. I walked with the word became flesh. So now any junk you talking about, anything you lying about, I know it because I was with him. Right. Our problem in church today is we don't know our words, so we can't point out. Wow. Well. well. We don't get in here to know it for ourselves, so I can stand up here and say anything. You'd be like, amen, because you have no background experience. All right. Or with the Bible. With the books. Uh, yeah. Once you get the knowledge of a risen Savior, who has time for anything else? Uh huh. That's how we learn yeah. when we learn for real. We stop playing games when we experience God for real. We stop playing around when we experience Jesus for real. When you get the revelation of who the Christ is and what his Lordship means in your life, all of a sudden, things change. If you're yeah. still playing games, I have to question, have you experienced him yes. for real? Yes. Have you had that one-on-one -on -one with Jesus mm -hmm. for real? Do you understand what him getting up means? Yeah. Uh, do you understand what all power in his hand mm -hmm. means? Do you understand that he's interceding for you at the right hand of the Father right now? Right, right, right. 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 Come on, what God is doing for you for real? Because when you grasp what God is doing, uh, it yeah. changes everything about my walk. All right, Doc. When you experience Jesus for real, yeah. yeah. things in your life begin to change. I ought to begin to see some differences yeah. in your person. Yeah. I ought to begin to see you touching people's lives because Jesus commanded us to. I ought to see some differences. Yeah. You have a personal experience. Are you taking the time to meet Jesus intimately? Yeah. Are you taking the time to hear, you know, I can do this because I heard. God speak to me in that still small book. Mm -hmm. are, are we spending time enough with him to hear? Or are we just rushing? Are we just uh -huh. ignoring God? Are we reading the word mm -hmm. so God can speak to us, to his text? Let me tell you, his text still talks. Yeah. 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 I can read Psalms 23, seven days a week, yes. all year long, and I'm Lord telling you, God will keep yes. revealing yeah. something yeah. to yeah. you. Keep picking it still. Talks after yeah. all these thousands of years and after uh -huh. all this time, the word still lives. Because yeah. yeah. everything else will pass away but my word. word. Yeah. 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 It's going to live yeah. forever. And yeah. when I get that, I can stand on it firmly because 
The only thing not changing is this. The world is constantly changing. The right. political is changing. And what is acceptable is changing. But this does not yes, change. Right, right. And folk may not like it, folk may not understand huh. it. But this is what I'm going to stand on because yeah. I've experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. What is your experience with Jesus led you to do? Huh. All right. What is your experience with Jesus caused you to do? I, I watched a man this week who had an experience with Jesus and he decided, because I know my text, I'm going to stand on my word in an adverse situation. Mm -hmm. And they called him on TV and they tried to set him up. And they said, what do you think about this dude coming out homosexuality? So I respect his decision. And then they said, well, what do you believe? And he says, my Bible tells me that it's a sin. It's fornication. And they tried to crucify him for it, but he came out and said, y'all might be mad. But the word says that it's a sin. And it might be politically correct now, but if you want to ask me what I believe, I've experienced God enough to believe the text. Have you experienced God enough yeah. to yeah. stay on it when well, nobody else wants to? All right. Have you experienced God enough yeah. to hold firm when everybody else is quick? Have you experienced God to be the only one in the crowd to say, that ain't right because that ain't Bible? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Chris had an experience with God and yeah. said, I'm going to stand there yeah. when nobody else is willing to stand. Yeah. I might lose my job, but I'm going to stand. Yeah. They yeah. might hate on me, but I'm going to stand. Yeah. My yeah. finances might change, but I'm going to stand. Yeah. He writes this letter and he says, I know him because I was there. Uh -huh. Can we testify to anybody that we've been there with God? All right. Yeah. We've been there when God did something. We experienced God's change in our lives. We've felt the move of God. Uh, too many Sundays we come in here and we leave the same way we came. Yeah. And I come to experience the move of God. Yeah, yeah, too many yeah. Sundays we yeah. come in here yeah. and we miss it. What God is saying, but I come to hear a word from the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes we do devotion and we do devotion and we just read because we want to say we read, but I want to experience yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. And I open up yeah. this Bible and I want to yeah. hear from God. Yeah. Yeah. What have our experiences told? Yeah. What have our experiences led us to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on. Our experiences are to change. Our experiences are to make us bold. Our yeah. experiences are to have us standing up saying, God, what do you have for me? What do you yes. want me to do, God? Right. I'm telling you, I'm able to rest. Yes. Just tell me when to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Peter told yes. me, I know him. And you might have some questions about what I'm telling you, but when you meet him, like I met him, mm -hmm. you'll have no more questions. God bless you.